Well, good good morning, good morning, everyone, and and certainly, I'm honored to be asked to speak today, joining my colleague at the General Assembly, uh, Representative Wrangler Vassell, and I see my constituent Leroy Bologna, who's been on this battlefield with me a long time, and I want to I want to commend the uh, the Rhode Island Black Business Association and its members for their long suffering in the continuing saga of fairness and equality for businesses of color. Lisa, I want to thank you and encourage you in Reba uh, in the spirit of Galatians 6, 9, and it says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, Senator Cano uh, sends her support and regrets as unfortunately she had to uh, uh, work and could not attend. And she expressed to me her disappointment that minority vendors of color have been uh, bypassed again. Uh, she pointed to the 34 million that was allocated for hospital construction with waivers given that resulted in no MBE participation. The centuries long trend of systemic racism continues. The data speaks for itself. The communities of color have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. We're witnessing the continuation of past practices where our negative statistics are used to draw funds to our state, but never reach those for whom it was intended. Just saying systemic inequities does not capture the centuries of injustice that continue today. Language has been sanitized. Many feel we need to call a spade a spade because what we're really seeing is a knee on the neck of businesses that strangles the economic efforts of our community. The stranglehold that has held us back for so long needs to be stopped and removed. As the original sponsor of the 10% set aside law in the mid eighties, when I was in the house of representatives, I can't begin to tell you of my uh, frustration over the years and the pain as the intent was subverted. And the reality is our black and brown contractors are left out on the outside still trying to get in. Laws on the books, lack enforcement, perhaps it's time for the black and brown contractors to sue the state. The law was undermined from the beginning when white contractors put the businesses in their wives' names. It was suggested that we need a separate set aside specifically for black and brown contractors. And, and Lisa, I support you in that. And a waiver provision needs to be, the waiver provision needs to be dropped. And again, require that prime, co prime contractors have MBE participation. Those not in compliance should be barred from state contracts. And don't tell me that it can't be done because the board at Wiggins Village, because I represent Wiggins Village too, ensured minority participation in a major rehab project several years ago of approximately 14 to $16 million, and they exceeded 10%. I believe it was close to 30% minority participation. So when, it, when people want to do it, it can be done. So I heard from a, a, con, uh, from a contractor, a friend of mine, that Massachusetts had a staff of over a dozen in their equal opportunity office to monitor uh, job sites, et cetera, for compliance. When they started the program in Rhode Island, however, their office started out understaffed to begin with, with only five people, and then it was cut to one and a half positions. How uh, could job sites be monitored? I understand that other states have an independent office for enforcement, not run by the state. And that was another, uh, another suggestion that was given to me by River, and it's, it's a very good idea. There is still concern about prompt payment uh, to subcontractors by the prime contractors. That puts a stranglehold on the subcontractors' cash flow who also have to pay their workers in a timely manner. This is a way that prime contractors control and make subcontractors dependent and can, uh, can lead to eventual bankruptcy which happened to a couple of black contractors that I know. They put a stranglehold on their cash flow. Black businesses uh, need access to capital, especially during COVID-19. They were looking to the governor for help to reopen businesses, 
most got left out. When there is a commitment, when there's a political will from the top of the administration, the program works. And I remember when it was part of previous governors, and I believe it was either uh, Dupreet or Sunland, that had the black contractors, I believe it was Stan Cameron, at the cabinet meetings, and they met monthly at those cabinet meetings where they would go over the participation rates and what needed to be done to, done to improve the system. So regular meetings are needed with the governor monthly if people are serious about ending systemic racism in state government. In closing, Lisa, I know that it's been uh, frustrating for our black and brown businesses whether it's our lawyers trying to become judges or our contractors trying to, uh, trying to uh, participate in the state MBE program, sadly, many feel it's a waste of time and they no longer apply because of the frustration that they have to feel and the obstacles that they have to jump through and still get left out. And then it puts me and, and, and Representative uh, uh, Wrangler Vassell in a bad position because we're, we're, we, then we're up there hollering, oh, we need, we need more uh, 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 people of color in this area and more people of color in that area. And then they throw back in our face, well, your people didn't apply. Yeah, they didn't apply because you kept them out so long they got frustrated and went to Massachusetts for work. But I challenge them I challenge the contractors that are here today, and I challenge all of us not to give up, but to remember our roots, the long suffering of our ancestors who didn't quit. They sought and received support from God-fearing people, knew that better days were coming, and they kept on keeping on. The battle for justice and equality belongs to the Lord, and we are vessels in it. And here we are. So let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we don't give up. God bless you, Ribba and Lisa. Keep doing what you're doing, and we're going to keep fighting the good fight. God bless you.